Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies uh, 69 Pontiac GTO kit. Uh, we're doing it as the judge, obviously, and uh, man, we got a ton done. So let me get the crew out the way, because they've been really busting their behind all weekend. And uh, I want to show you what's going down here, because it's it's been a lot of fun in the shop. Hey, how about that? Nobody felt today. <laughs> uh, let me clear out the tools. Check out the bench. Got the vise. Really happy with that. And I finally found some sprue to make coffee mugs. So these guys will be able to have some coffee. <clears throat> so we will start with what I just had the most fun with. Um... I don't know, the end of the week here. The uh, wheels and tires. I pull you in here if I can. Wow. And I'll try to keep you in center of frame. So we're about an inch off of the line here. Um, I did not at all, one bit, like the chrome rims. So I stripped them. I threw them in LA Awesome. I think I told you that last time. Um, threw them in LA awesome. I dried them off real good, washed them, scrubbed them with Dawn, and then I sprayed them with Tamiya's Chrome Silver with the Mobius 2 millimeter, 0.2 millimeter brush. And I'm telling you, it sprayed nice and smooth. I then came in and instead of using um, semi gloss black, I used German Gray. I'm starting to like this with the rims because it's it's dark enough to be dark, but it's not um, that black. I don't know. I, I don't care for the black gloss. And every one of these I've ever seen, it might be black, but it kind of doesn't look that way. So I've been going with that German gray, and it's been working out really good. And then just a shot of um, clear red. The X27 clear red in the center. I like the red dots instead of the black ones. And that's why I did that. I think it'll look good with the orange on the judge. And then the decals laid on really nice. Um, I cut them, put them in the water. I have hot water, and I mean hot water uh, from the tap. Our tap runs very warm, and I, I like it that way. But I did a count of 45, pull them off, put my thumb on the paper this way, and then I pulled the rest of the paper out, and that left the decal there. And when it did, when I did that, it also waters the back of the rubber, because the rubber is hard to keep wet. It just wants to run everywhere but where the decal is. And if you do it that way, it seems like the water stays underneath the decal, so you can fuss it around a little bit. And all I use to move it around is a toothpick. And then for when I get it close where I want it I'll bring a q-tip up close to it and I'll start pulling the water out from underneath one side of it and that'll make my anchor point and then I can move it around just a little bit and then I start working that water down until it's off and then I'll just rub it down this way just to get it to where I squeegee the water out from underneath it and every time I've done that it's worked out very well for tires um, on these I've also Thanks for everybody from Grandpa Mark's Hobbies for making me step up my game one more level. I started putting the uh, valve stems in, and all that is is point two, you know, my point three millimeter solder painted uh, semi gloss black. Drilled the hole in this way, and just a little bit of glue, dropped it in, good to go. So there's the rubber. I sanded this um, with, believe it or not, with some really coarse this is 80 grit um sanding stick and that's what i did with that and it went quick and got that raised line out of the center so i am happy with the rims um i was not when they were chromed like i said i looked at it and it was horrible now let's jump into the engine here where we've gotten a ton done See if I can bring in just a little bit more here. Um, everybody's been asking about my engine stand. 
Uh, Buddy 3D printed one for me and sent this, and he also sent the dyno. And uh, he doesn't he doesn't do them to sell, but it's really cool. It it just it's nice to be able to just drop it and be able to adjust it to keep it flat. Um, you can find this online if you have a 3D printer. It's um, just print it out yourself. I don't have a 3D printer yet. Um, if I ever do get one, I might start mass producing these things because of how many people have shown interest in them. But back to the engine, um, let's talk about a few things right off the rip. Oh man, I keep hitting the camera. Sorry guys. Let me just take my visor off. I know what I did here. Um, first thing, when I put the carburetor on, the way the indexing line is for the carburetor, it put it on an angle like a 45 degree angle off center this way so <laughs> just messing around with it I put it on there and then I just twisted it to center going the right direction and it it locked itself in I think it kind of melted the, the, whatever twisted itself in and it's locked tight it is not coming out of there um, drilled the hole for the uh, fuel line put it in ran it down and around and up and underneath and down into the back and it looked really good um my crankcase vent comes up and underneath pcv right now just comes up and over here uh on the back side of the carb it does go into the uh, air cleaner on the bottom so that'll happen down the road uh heater hoses i put the one in the back this is goes to the lower uh, part of the the heater uh, this one, the long one from the front, goes to the upper part, just if you're, you're keeping track. <laughs> uh, the sending line, I just ran to the back. That's just my AWG 32 wire put together, twisted up tight, and then painted with the acrylic black paint. And uh, I'm good with that. It, it looks really good. It just it needed it over there. I haven't done the throttle linkage yet, and you can see my coil line is running wild because that coil is going to end up being on a firewall somewhere. Um, the other thing, and I'm kind of, I got a list over here that I'm following. So um, the dipstick is in, but it wasn't the, the way the headers are, there was no way to push the dipstick down through. So I actually had to drill a little hole in here. And put the dipstick in and just glued it in there um, like again it's Hollywood <laughs> so it is what it is but it came out good it looks really good uh, then I did my uh, wires and thanks to Lennis and everybody again over at Grandpa Mark's Hobbies for doing the peer pressure thing I made the boots today it's the first time I've done boots uh, just because I never really had the had anything to make them with but Lennis uses uh, paper clip um, the insulation off the paper clip and it's stripped off of there really super simple I just stripped it with in my other drawer I just stripped it with uh, regular wire strippers that I've had for a billion years I got these for Christmas forever ago and I just pulled and it popped right off and then I snipped it to little sizes drilled my holes glued them in let them sit um, painted them with oh geez it's a long stretch but I'll get it for you I painted it with my dark yellow the XF60 I like this this was pretty good for um, XL Brown I also painted the distributor cap, the Excel Brown. Um, then the wires, I just used uh, my lemon yellow and ran them the way they should be run. They are in the proper firing order. Check me if you want. <laughs> uh, again, peer pressure. Thanks, guys. Keeping me honest. The uh, belt and pulley and everything went on good. I still have to make uh, marks on here. And when I do my marks on here, um, the only thing I'm using is my uh, Prismacolor white um, pencil. And I'll sharpen that end up really good and just 
draw lines this way in it. Um, but what I make sure I do is, since you know the belt's running, I'll, I'll offset it somewhere like going around the side of the belt here or up in here. I, I try not to put it right dead center if I can get away with it. And that just, I don't know, it, it makes me feel better, I guess. Because uh, what are the odds of that belt stopping right dead up on top like that? Um, the alternator went on good. I left it the black pulley this time. Um, I made a bracket out of um, some real thin evergreen. And when I did that, I kind of cut it in an arch, uh, you know, a slow arch. So you can adjust the tension on the, on the belt. I don't know if you can even see it. Um, but it's, it is there. Now I just have to paint that, uh, um, with semi-gloss black or even flat black, maybe. The, uh, fan clutch looks really good. I did a little, um, having fun with the, the bolts on the bottom. But it all worked out really good. The headers, or the, uh, exhaust manifolds went on really nice. <laughs> okay, I had to stop. I was coughing my head off there. Um, but the exhaust manifolds went on really easy. No problems. So, I'm pretty much done with the engine, except for dropping it in, of course, and and uh, getting that set up, I was thinking <clears throat> about when I put this on, um, what if I pull it in, in the frame here, I was thinking about when I put my air cleaner on of, of using this and making that little vent that comes up from the heater to draw warm air in in the morning. Um, but we'll see how that goes down the road. I think the way we are right now, I should just be happy with what I got and move on. But you know me, I got to play. If I can get enough room under there and, and figure out how to bend it right, I will. But there's the engine. Air cleaner came out pretty good. I still got to put the decal on though. The dashboard came out great. Um, I did the light or the gloss green in the center here, and then I put a real sharp toothpick. And uh, I just sharp, I literally sharpened it with my standing stick and did a red line for the dial after the green was dry. I got my decals in place. Uh, they went in pretty stinking easy, to be honest with you. And what I did with them is my trusty toothpick. I was holding the paper. I put the decal on my finger this way, put my thumb on it, pulled the paper out, left the decal on my finger, grabbed the decal with the, with the uh, toothpick, or the uh, tweezers, and I set it down in there with a bunch of water in here. And then I was able to move it around with the toothpick and get it where it wanted to be. And then just stuck a, one of my pointy Q-tips into it. Didn't jam it in there, but I slowly started putting it in there and making sure it didn't move and draw the water out. And that worked out very well for me. The uh, judge decal went on nice. No problems there. And then I took on top of these decals, I put two coats of my clear gloss Mod Podge over the top just to uh, give them that lens look. And uh, I don't have my 3D Mod Podge yet. I just haven't been there to get it. <clears throat> and then lastly, I just rung the um, circles on the above the gauges. And I went in at a real sharp angle this way with my gel pen and did that, figuring that if you're looking at it this way, with it tilted, you uh, you won't see if it ran in just a little bit. Um, and especially dead on like that, it looks very thin. It's thinner than the ball is on the um, pen. So that worked out very well for me. The uh, chassis. <clears throat> I painted the gas tank with flat aluminum. It's two coats, and I'll tell you what, um, what I ended up doing 
is I came down here and I painted the painted the gas tank and then whatever got on the front of it I came back and I painted that black and then I painted this to get rid of that and you know you're back and forth thing a little bit <clears throat> just it is what it is just to um, to keep those lines nice and clean as clean as I could get them and then I took my I took my uh, um, metallic gray the XF 56 and I painted that strap with that and I I like the way that looks um, it just it just needed it and they did such a great job with the detail on the strap that I just I had to paint it in like that and then my um, fuel hose got rubber black so that's it with the chassis and now the decal part of it and the body um, I got the uh, the decal in the hood here on the tack that went in I hope that comes in uh, clear um, that went in there very easy I still haven't done the ram airs on the side yet I did paint the bottom of this um, acrylic flat black um, just I should have opened these up but that day that I went to do this my hands weren't very steady so I just painted it the, the black and that way any overage I could come with a toothpick and just kind of wipe out of the way um, but if I would have tried to drill it and clean it out I think I would have messed it up that day and that's why I didn't, didn't drill it out honestly um, but again the tack dropped in there just nice and I'm very happy with that the um, spoiler got the the judge on there it went down nice um, yeah this is not attached I said I was planning on doing that and the more I thought about it and the more people talked to me trying to get that clear and polished underneath there would have been a mistake <clears throat> so I just two little pieces of foam uh, here and here and two toothpicks and I just attached the two toothpicks with some super glue with another toothpick and I held it with a clamp that way and I painted both sides of it that way and it worked out okay and I'll just use my um, uh, clear Mod Podge I'll put it on I'll let it sit for a few minutes just to tack up a little bit and then I'll set it in place and that should work out good so that's why this isn't attached <laughs> Um, the body we'll bring it in I'm gonna back you up a little bit there we go um, I'll let back you up just a smidge more get the whole thing in there if I can there we go um, I painted the inside here uh, and the firewall with my acrylic black because I wanted that to be flat I will come back and hit that with uh, quick shine and that'll give it a semi-gloss color and that's what I'm looking for because the inside of this is semi-gloss and, and it'll match out pretty darn close but I wanted it to be separate too same with the front I will not be touching the uh, shroud because I did that with rubber black and I want to leave it that vinyl look so we're good there the inside I painted the black just to get it to where when you're looking at it this way you don't see it um, this one has the full glass that goes over so uh, I'm trying to get rid of those little the four little marks is a moot point because they're going to be covered with the glass and you'll never see them anyhow I still haven't broken off my steering I bent it around a little bit but I still haven't broken it off so we're um, if you guys are taking bets somebody might lose this one <laughs> But now the decals, I mean, check them out. They went down very nice. I'll even bring you up close here for this. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Um, but they made it just a smidge big for the, for the mold. And that way when you put it on, it wrapped around the mold and it gave it like a 3D uh, chrome look on there. And that worked out really cool. The little marker... Um, I like it it I wouldn't have been able to paint it if I was doing anything I would have drilled it and put an LED in there but 
um, like a fiber optics one, but we're not lighting this one up. The GTO, I was kind of worried about. I was happy they did it, and I kind of worried about it too, um, that that was three separate decals. But it went down there no problem. The mold is the same exact size as the letters, so it dropped in, formed, and it went on good. The long, skinny decal. I was asked about that and how I did it. And pretty much what I did is I cut the paper that really close, maybe a sixteenth on either side of it uh, and front and back. Then I soaked it in very hot water, very hot water. And uh, did a count of 45, I think it was. Came back, I took the paper and I ran it across where it was going to go. Just to get everything wet, I took the paper, I put my thumb down here, and I started slowly pulling the paper back, you know, back from this way off the back side, and watching where this was going, and it did not lay down straight for me. So, with the toothpick, I'm moving things back and forth, and my paintbrush, I'm using it to keep water underneath it so it would move. But in the end, and, and about a half an hour for this side and the other side, I was able to get them to lay down there pretty darn good. Um, after they were down and I got the water out from underneath them using the uh, uh, Q-tips and, and brushing them down real lightly with a paper towel, I took my X-Acto knife and cut inside where the door jam would be on both sides. Then I took some really hot water and I just dripped it in there and that decal, you could see it just go and suck itself in to form into that crack and that was perfect I do have um, Microsol and Microset I didn't need either one of them for this it's flat um, didn't have to conform to anything and the decals were thin enough to where you didn't need it even for the GTOs that laid down on top and the thing on the back here for the signal it formed right over top of it and it went down great the little GTO on this side the little judges you saw I put the little judge in the uh, on the dashboard so now I'm, I'm getting really close here to starting to slap this thing together um, my uh, bumper back bumper just clear red and then the uh, flat white drop of Panel liner, dab it off real quick, and then quick shine. Uh, it does have decals for these, so if you want to go the decal way, you can. But I kind of like the way that uh, flat black or flat white works with the uh, black panel liner. It does a good job, and then the quick shine, just one drop, let it dry, and it it does. It makes that look just like a uh, just like the clear um, opaque lenses that the backup lights are. So, <clears throat> still have to do the front turn signals, but that'll be about it for this thing. I'm going to get the, um, uh, what you call it, the, I can't even find it. I'm looking for it as I'm talking, but the uh, front grill piece is in. The GTO went in really well on that, too, and laid down nice, so I'm happy with that. Well, really, I'm happy with everything with this kit. Um, with that, the only thing I'd really like to say now is I want to send some good vibes to Bruce from Bruce's Eclectic World. Uh, he's having problems with his eye, and uh, and I just feel bad for him. So I want to say, Bruce, we're all thinking about you. And um, if everybody could go over and just maybe watch his video and shoot him a comment, good luck comment, or whatever you could, uh, I think he'd appreciate that. Uh, with that, I'm going to let you go. Y'all have a great day, a great week, and a better tomorrow. And I will see you soon with probably the finished kit. Thank you again for watching.